New research reveals toads living in urban areas have less venom than those in rural areas. With more joining us live is Lynn Schwarzkopf from James Cook University. Tell us more, Lynn. Is this a classic case of animals adapting to their environments? Yes, it is absolutely a classic case of that. So we think that um, when toads reach urban environments, they have less predators, fewer predators than um, when they're in the country, and uh, it allows them to have smaller poison glands. And I assume that's a good thing, less venom in urban areas. Um, as we know, of course, cane toads can be a real threat, can't they, to native wildlife? Yes, um, they certainly can. They can be a really serious problem. Um, it's hard to tell how much reduced the threat really is because they have um, smaller poison glands, but we haven't actually measured how much poison is produced. Um, you just saw in that picture there, um, she was holding up a really big toad, and the poison glands are those two big masses that you see on what looks like they're on their shoulders. Those are the poison glands. And so those poison glands are measurably smaller on average in urban areas than they are in, um, than they are in country areas. However, um, whether it makes them very much less poisonous is hard to say because they um, are just really, really poisonous. So even a small amount of their venom can be deadly for our native fauna. So it's difficult to know how. It's, it's less expensive for the toad to uh, produce this uh, poison. You can see the glands really well there behind the eyes um, and just in front of that person's finger. Um, but yeah, it's hard to know. It's cheaper for the toads to produce, but it's really difficult to say whether it makes them less dangerous. Those pictures are extraordinary. You're right. That one that that woman was holding up in those those images, that was absolutely huge. I can't imagine coming across that one in the garden. I understand that you found there could also be a difference in the length of cane toads' legs between urban and rural areas. Um, that's right. So it's a bit, the legs are a much more complicated story. So there's, you can actually see the venom being produced there. When, see, she's got her thumb there and you can see those little white blobs. That's the venom being produced on the, uh, on the gland there. Um, sorry, legs, yes. So the bit above, just above her hand there where she's holding her the back legs of the toad, uh, those are the bits of the leg we measured. And it turns out that in males in urban areas, they're longer, that part of the leg is longer, whereas in females, it's actually shorter. And so it's not a fantastically clear picture, but what we think is happening is that male toads move around a lot more than female toads anyway, because male toads move from place to place where females are breeding. And so they move from pond to pond. Uh, female toads do less moving around. Uh, and so it could be that in urban areas, male toads need to move further to reach ponds um, because they're um, more uh, because the ponds are further apart, they have to cross roads, they have to um, cross people's lawns and things like that. And so it's possible that their legs are longer for that reason. And because females move less, their legs are not longer. In, in fact, they're relatively shorter. Um, but that one's a less of a clear story.